Okay, so we're going to do Excel. So you just click on your Excel button and you should get a blank sheet like this. Now, I'm going to show you how to create an amortization table. Now, before you do this, you need to do the monthly calculation for your house loan. Find out the monthly payment. So, if you haven't done so already, I'll just remind you what that looks like. For my loan, I did a $175,000 loan. Okay. I want you to assume that the interest rate is going to be 4% for your house loans. Okay. So you're going to do 4%. So we then multiply by 0 0.04. We divide by 12 because it's a monthly payment. And then you do the denominator, right? It's 1 minus uh, 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12. And then you do the negative exponent here. 360 is what you will put for a 30-year loan. Now, if you want, later on, you can experiment. You can change this to 180, and that would be a, a 15-year loan. Okay, so that's my regular payment. When I did this on my calculator just now, a few moments ago, I found out that the regular payment was going to be $835.48. Okay, so now that's based on my house loan of $175,000. This is where your... Uh, project will differ from mine. You will have a different total here because what you did on your house plan is you took your total square footage and you multiplied it by 140. So if your square footage for your home is 1800, okay, you would multiply that by 140 and that would be your loan amount. Of course, you deduct your down payment first. Yeah, you may as well round. It doesn't have to be exact. When you now, when you really buy a new house, they'll do everything exact. Okay, but this it's this number that I need for my Excel program. Okay, so I'm gonna switch screens now. Go back to Excel. Okay, you ready? Now, here's what I recommend. You want your table to look really nice, and Tomorrow, I'll show you how to do the PowerPoint. And you're going to use the snipping tool. You're going to snip part of your Excel amortization table, and you're going to put it into your PowerPoint. So you're going to want to save this onto a, uh, your, your, your Google Drive or somewhere, on a thumb drive or somewhere. You want to have access to this, uh, this, um, this assignment that you're working on right now. So it's really easy to do. You can actually create any amortization table like within five minutes if you know what you're doing. <laughs> so uh, first thing we want to do is go right over to column B and we want to write payment. Okay, move over to the next column. We'll call this one interest. Move over to the next column. We'll call this one principal. And we'll move over one more column and call this one the balance. Now, I like my stuff to look super cool. So I'm going to I'm going to center everything. I'm going to uh, center my my uh, column headers. These are going to be my column headers. Now, on this very next box here underneath the balance, I put the starting loan amount. For my loan that I'm looking at, it's 175000 One, two, three. Does that make sense what I've done so far? <coughs> now, over here, I'm going to create what's called a counter. Excel is a pretty powerful tool, and it recognizes certain counting or certain patterns. That's one of its strengths. Now... I want you to notice the cursor right now is a white plus sign. You guys see that? It's white plus. Now, once I move it close to this little green box in the corner, it turns to a black plus, and it's smaller, right? When it turns to gr black plus, it's then called the auto fill handle. Auto fill handle. And what it's saying is, I'm looking for a pattern, and I'll repeat your pattern if I know what it is. Right now, I don't have a pattern for it to recognize. But check this out. I'm going to put a 1 right here. 
and I'm going to put a 2 right here. Everybody okay with me? Now, if we had to number clear to 360, you can imagine how annoying this program would be because we're going to have 360 payments, right? But here's the power in Excel. You can highlight stuff, and Excel will say, hey, I think I know what the pattern is, and I could copy it for you if you want. So here's what we do. I'm going to highlight those two boxes. You see like that? And Excel says, I know the pattern. You're counting up by ones. <laughs> it's like easy, right? You guys got it? Hey, you got those highlighted? Now, you, in order to get Excel to copy that pattern for you, you need to grab the autofill handle. And what we're going to do is click and drag. You're going to click and drag the 360 payments. Let me show you how it's done. I'll just do it real quick, okay? I'm going to click and drag. Once it turns black right there, you, you click and you drag. That means you hold the click down. And you drag it. You see? There it counted for you. Isn't that cool? Okay. So well, let me undo that. Okay. So the idea is you move the white plus sign up to this green corner here until it turns black. And then you click and drag. Now I want Excel to do this for 360. So I'm going to click and drag way down until I get to 360. Why? Because there's 360 payments that I'm going to make. And I'm going to create the entire amortization schedule on Excel. Does that make sense? So I just go down here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm slowing down. I want to go to 360 right there. Does that make sense what I did? I'm going to stop right there. And bam! Excel counted it all up for me. It says, I know your pattern. I'm going to fill it in for you. Does that make sense? That's called the auto fill handle. And that makes Excel very nice for you because it's going to do a whole bunch of calculations for me here in just a little bit. Is it because you guys have a piece of junk over there at your desk? Oh my goodness. Okay, you have to highlight two of the boxes in, for, in order for it to recognize the pattern. You have to highlight one and two. And do, do you need to see that step all over again? Do it one more time. So I'm going to hit undo here. Okay, you see what I did? You have to highlight, if you're counting by ones, you have to highlight two boxes like that. Yeah, it has to be able to know what the pattern you're interested in doing. Okay, if you do it with just one, then it's going to copy one everywhere. Oh, well, I got to go clear up to 360 because there's, okay, there's the black handle. It's autofill handle now. I'm going to click and hold the button down and drag it. Okay, that's called clicking and dragging. Click and drag all the way down to 360. Now you can go faster like I'm going. I'm going turbo speed now. Whoa, slow down right there. 360. You see? There we go. Bam. Now, again, I like my stuff to look cool, so at the same time, I'm going to center all that column. I'm going to make this column a little bit narrower, like that. Everybody understand what I just did? What? You could make the column a little bit narrower. You see, when things turn black, it's saying you can edit now. Go ahead and edit. And so I made, you can make the column wider. Make the column narrower. Since this is just a counter, I'm just making it more narrow. Everybody good so far? All the way down to 360. Now click on that box. You guys okay? Now according to my calculations, based on this loan and based on a 4% interest rate, I calculated this payment to be $835.00. And 48, whoops, 48 cents. Okay? Now, that payment is the same for all 360 payments. So now I'm going to click and do the autofill handle again. But I don't need a pattern. It's the same idea over and over and over again. So this time I'm going to click and drag all the way down. You guys ready to see this? All right. So you click and drag it. I'm going to drag it all the way down. All the way down, 
going fast now. I got to get to 360. It's the same payment for 360 payments. That is a total of 30 years. Bam. Now I'm going to center that column too because I like my stuff to look cool. Okay. Everybody good so far? Oh, I know. Yeah, you know it. <clears throat> right. You guys have that so far? Now, when you're doing your Excel, you're going to pick your house. You're going to do your loan amount that you calculated. So yours will be slightly different from mine. But in the end, it'll look very, very similar when it gets to the final payment. Now, one of the beautiful things about Excel is that you can put formulas in it. You can have it do a calculation just like your calculator. And guess what? To calculate the interest, it's nothing more than our simple interest formula. You might remember our simple interest formula. What was it? Um, the simple interest formula was I equals P times R times T. So that's the formula I want to put into Excel. I want Excel to do this. I want it to take $175,000. I want it to calculate the interest for one month. So the interest rate was 0 0.04. The time is for 112. It's one month only, right? So there's my principal. There's my rate. There's my time. Okay? Now, if I had to put these numbers in every single time, it would take a long time, right? But that's what the beauty is behind Excel. I could put a formula in, and then I can copy that formula and do the autofill handle. So let me show you how you do this on Excel now. Really powerful idea. So you click on the cell. In order to put any formula in, you have to put the equal sign in first. You click on the cell itself. So I clicked on the interest. This is my interest column, right? You click on that cell. Now you have to put equals. This tells Excel I'm expecting a formula. It's all these interruptions. Start off with the equal sign. Now Excel is expecting you to put some sort of formula saying, what do you do? Well, hang on. That's where we're at right now. We're at C2. Okay, but what do I want to do? Remember, the simple interest is the principal or the balance times 0 0.04 divided by 12. Watch. I'm going to click on this box. I want to take that amount. You see what it did? It put E2 right there. And now what do I want to do with that? I want to times. It, to get the times, you have to use the asterisk. It's the one above number eight on your keyboard. You put the asterisk. That's called an asterisk. Yeah, I just multiplied. What do I need to multiply? By 0 .04. 0 .04. I put that in. And so right now what Excel is doing is saying, oh, you want to multiply this number and you want to multiply it by 0 .012, uh, 0 0.04. But now I need to divide by 12 because that's the monthly rate. So to do the divide, you have to hit the, uh, the slash button. It's right underneath the question mark on your keyboard. So I'm going to click on that now. Is that button right there? divide in Excel and I'm going to divide by 12. Now, once you have the formula in there, you hit enter. You put enter. And as soon as I hit enter, guess what it did? It did the calculation. You see? Now that's the beauty of Excel. You can put a formula in there and it does a calculation just like a calculator would. Does that make sense? So what, it, what I have so far is the interest payment. I have to pay interest on that before I pay off the balance. 
this make sense so far? Now, I want to put a new formula right here. Guess how much goes towards the loan? You see, when I'm making this payment, the bank says, hold up, you're not knocking this down so fast. you got to pay me this first. The bank says, that's my interest, loser. <laughs> well, he doesn't really say loser, but the point is, you have to pay this before you knock that down. So what's the amount that goes towards the principal? It's this one, subtract that one. Does that make sense? You take your principal, your payment, and subtract the interest. Okay, so once again, I want to put a formula. Please watch. Anytime you do a formula, you got to start out by putting an equal sign. There's the equal sign. Now, the way I figure out how much goes towards the principal is I take my payment and I subtract the interest. That's all you do here. You take your payment and subtract the interest. And once again, you hit enter. And so basically what this says now is that this amount here is going to go towards my balance. It's going, it's going. Well, yeah, well, basically you could just click on the boxes. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do and hit enter. You see what I did? Do you know? If you're following along with my exact numbers, you can do that. You want to see the interest again? Okay, let me take it out of there. Okay, now let me take this number out. You, you ready? I'll do the formula again. You have to put equals. Equals. You click on the balance. You then do times. You use the asterisk for times. 0 0.04. That's the interest rate. Divide by 12. That gives you the interest for one month. Hit enter. There it is. Now once again, the principal. You have to take your payment and subtract the interest because the interest goes through the bank. Okay, so you hit equals again. And now you click on this box. Hit the subtraction button, and you're subtracting the interest. Okay, and then once you've got the formula in there, hit enter, and you should have that. Now, is the balance still this? No. I've made a $252.15 payment towards that loan. So how do I need to change the balance? It's equal to the old balance minus the principal. Does that make sense? It's equal to the old balance minus the amount that goes towards the principal. So once again, I want to put in an equal sign. What is it equal to? It's the old balance minus the principal. Does that make sense? And now I put, you see, now it's slightly less, isn't it? Now, how many of you want to put in the formulas over and over and over again <laughs> for 360 months? Now, that would be annoying. Guess what? Back in the old days, that's how they had to do it. Uh, they had an accountant that did these calculations all day long, and they're figuring out interest and balance. But look, watch this. I just showed you how the autofill handle works, right? I can add that formula all the way down for 360 days. 360 payments. So once again, you're going to do the click and drag method. Click and drag. So I'm going to pull that formula, and it's going to copy it for all of those cells. And click and drag it all the way down. Okay, I want to go down to 360. Okay, keep going. Now your computers might be running kind of slow. Okay, you get down to 360. And bam. Why is it zeros? The reason why it's cycling through and it doesn't know what the other numbers are yet. You see, so notice when we go back up to the top, you can't really figure out this next number until you get the other two numbers figured out. Because it's saying, hey, 
uh, right now the interest is zero because it's saying the balance right here is zero. To calculate this one, it's looking over here and saying that's zero. So your interest is zero right now. But I'm going to copy this table down also. Oh, no, 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 it doesn't do that. Uh, you can try it, but I don't think it will. I would recommend just doing each one at the same time. Okay, so now the formula is in here already. See, there it is. It's up there. Well, it's up here. Well, it's up here. It tells you up here what the formula is. Now what I want to do is copy it. It says it's B3 minus C3. It's, you're doing this on your own. All right, so what I want to do is autofill. What, what Excel does is it automatically adjusts each cell. So now the next cell is going to be B4 minus C4, and the next one after that is going to be B5 minus C5, so on and so forth. It automatically adjusts that. Once you put the formula in it, it kind of understands what you're trying to do. Um, so I want to do autofill right here. Uh, click and drag that one all the way down. Go down to the bottom, and notice it slowed down for me as I got down to the bottom. Bam. Now, again, these are still zeros because I haven't finished the balance. I need to finish the balance column. And as I start to fill in this one, all of these are going to be calculated. Does that make sense? Again, this interest is based on this box right here. And that box has nothing in it right now. So it thinks the interest is zero until I fill this column in. So I'm going to do autofill again, and I'm going to fill this one in. Again, remember, you have to have a black plus. You're going to do a click and drag. So I click and drag this all the way down to the bottom, and now you're going to see the table is going to be completely filled in. Bam, right there. Okay? Now, you know that you have everything right if your final payment is right close to zero. Can anyone guess why mine is a negative two dollars? On my final payment, I paid two dollars too much. I overpaid. Well, here's the thing. Remember, as you're going along, um, you're rounding, right? And we made we made a, a an error right here, rounding to the nearest cent. And so, what banks really do is they adjust your monthly payment every once in a while, make you pay an extra three cents here. Every once in a while, they might adjust it two cents, depending on, uh, for the most part, they make you do the same payment, but they make it work out so that your final payment, this would be actually be zero. Okay? Now, I want to show you a couple other features, because this isn't really that cool yet. I want my stuff to look A number one, top quality stuff. So here's what I'm going to recommend. I'm going to start here at this box here, and I'm going to put a grid in. I'm going to show you a grid. You don't understand what a grid is? I'm going to highlight the whole thing and I'm going to make a grid. I'm going to go all the way down and the grid is going to put basically boxes around everything so that everything's nice and separated. So the grid is up here in this one. This gives you the grid options and I want to have a box around everything so I'm going to go down to that option and click that one. Do you see what it did? It put boxes around everything. I think that looks pretty cool. Now, uh, the other thing I think it looks kind of cheesy right here, is this based on dollars right now? My decimal places are too far, aren't they? I want to change everything so it looks like money. So you guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to highlight from here, and I'm going to go all the way down, and I'm going to make the format money. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go all the way down and I'll highlight the entire table and I'll say, hey, I want this to look like money. And right now you have more than two decimal places. Remember, with money, you can only go two decimal places. See that sign there? That allows you to format every cell as dollars. And now it looks like money. Isn't that cool? You see, so now everything's rounded to the nearest cent. You see? And so you can go to the bottom. And now I have $2 extra. So what it basically means, my final payment would have been about $2 less than this. And I would have made the balance zero. 
Does that make sense? Now, one other calculation I'd like you to do. I'd like you to find out the total interest you paid. Remember, we did that calculation when we were doing the assignment, 5.3. We calculated the total interest. What you do is you calculate your total number of payments and subtract the original loan amount. So let me show you how to do a very cool feature. Excel can add up things really fast. You can add a column up. Do you see? We said this was the interest, right? That's the interest, right? If I add up that whole column, I will have the total interest. So let's do that. Let's go straight down and add up the total interest. Now, you, what you do is you go one square, one square beyond the bottom. You're telling Excel where to put the sum. It's like you have a big column of numbers and you put a line underneath and you add, just like vertical column adding that you did in first grade, except for this now is adding 360 payment, uh, interest payments. It's adding them all together. Now, Excel is really fast. Now, you guess what? This is the auto sum button. You just click on that and it says, oh, you want me to add up the whole column? Sure, no problem. Bam. You click on this. Bam. And it puts the sum clear at the bottom. Now, right now it says, oh, this number is so big I can't even read it. I need to expand that column just a little bit so the number fits a little bit further. A little bit further. Bam. So, my house loan was 175000 and I ended up paying an extra 125770 This is my total interest right there. Now, I want a cool box behind around that one as well. But that's how you calculate the total interest right there. Okay? So, there you have it. This is your Excel. Now, by the way, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to center all the columns. So I'm going to do this, make sure everything's centered. That's kind of weird. I wonder why it didn't center. Well, just what box? This one? Oh, uh, I put this dollar sign in there. So, Oh, well, there you have it. You have what's called an amortization table. Now, once you're done, you will hit print. And you will have your own amortization table schedule for that loan. It's exactly what the banks would do. Except they have their own financial program that did it like this. I want to understand the Excel portion. Now, normally, if you're good at this, you can do any loan you want in about five minutes, as long as you know what to do. Like if you want to buy a car someday, and you want to do a four-year loan, or a five-year loan, or you want to do a 15-year loan, you can set it up with Excel and even find out if your bank's doing things right. Don't always trust their calculations. They make mistakes, too. In any event, this is what we call an amortization table. Any questions? Okay, I'm going to stop the video now. What you need to do on your project, you need to have most of the parts done. I'm going to give you the rest of the material to work on the assignment. And tomorrow I'll show you what I expect for the PowerPoint presentation. It's not very long, but the PowerPoint presentation wants you to personalize the, this project. I want it to be your own project, a project that you'd actually show to your parents and to the community. And you say, hey, this is my dream someday. I would like to have a house. And this is how I'm going to do it. So and so. Does that still make sense? So you personalize it. And you'll use the snipping tool. I don't know if you've seen the snipping tool, but it's one of the coolest things ever. It's that guy right there. You can snip whatever you want, and you can put it in. You can, like, copy it. So you're going to snip certain parts of your amortization loan. You can snip that and put it into your PowerPoint. Make sense? one of the coolest features ever, the snipping tool. All right, so that concludes it. Back off the sound there a little bit. Sorry about that. I'm going to stop.